Well, I want to follow up just a little bit on why, you know, the young, young people, they don't understand treaties, and neither do the old white people or the senators, because they've been raised in a, in a certainly a totally different way. Uh, I mean, they don't understand community. They don't understand family. They don't understand our relationship with each other. They don't under, even understand our first relationship with this planet that we call Mother Earth. You know, they, they're still following the, 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 the Christian doctrine. Um, but our first re relationship is, is with this Earth. We understand that. Th those are the basic understanding, basic teachings. So how could this young boy grow up, in, in a white boy growing up, growing up in elementary, grade school, high school, and never hearing the words about treaty, never hearing the words about the relationship with this earth, and then go on to be, go to college and then have a career as an attorney, then go become a senator. How will they ever know or even make any kind of decision based upon those those early teachings of, of our relationship with this earth. I mean, what, uh, this earth is, we call it Mother Earth. The moon is called our, our grandmother. And in some places, the, the, our, our, the sun is our oldest brother. So, but they, they, they will never understand that. So how can we, how can they ever say, oh, now I know what you guys are about. If they came, We've been to all their churches. We know all their churches. We know, uh, the, some people know all the commandments and all the scriptures, but they have never come to our church. They have never come to our sweat lodge. They have never come to try to understand who we are. And I feel sorry for them because then they're gonna go to, go to the, when they die, I mean, their life is over. They, they failed miserably on their first teachings of this planet Earth. This is our mother. And to abuse each other with their weapons of power is to abuse Mother Earth itself. So, I don't see the government of the United States ever doing anything right with Indian people. If, the, if the Floyd Westerman has said it many times, if the government wants to be right, they've got to be right with Indian people first. So they, they commit many wrongs. They, they grab our sons and daughters and take them off to war in, in other parts of the world. So what, what, have, what, have, what have they done? Nothing. Nothing because they don't. They don't understand the relationship between us and the water, one of the elements of life. They don't understand the elements of, of the air. Why do we fight for these rights that we had before? Because that's what makes us survive. Why do they try to stop us from harvesting wild rice? For God's sake, that, that, that's, that's food that we're trying to harvest. Why do they try to halt us. Why do they try to put us in, why do they put us in jail for harvesting food? When they wanted to get rid of all the Indians in Niswa, Minnesota, then they went further and said, Eve, they, we, what, what are they after? Why are they coming here? They, and, and this place and, and, and at um, Hole in the Day, Baganagizik Lake, has just filled with wild rice. And the city of Niswa, made an ordinance forbidding anybody from harvesting wild rice on that lake. Yes, they, they, are, they have laws against, and sometimes you know, we, to build fires for our sweat lodge ceremonies, you know, they, they, we have to get a burning, burning permit and they say no to that. Even, even on your own land? On our own land. I was arrested with 11 other people right here at Wounded Knee in 1972, and we were cutting a we were cutting down a cottonwood tree for the Sundance Arbor, and 
the BIA police arrested 11 of us, charged us with, with logging without a permit. And they took us to jail in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. And uh, we were in there for about three hours and finally I heard somebody cussing out there and it was the BIA superintendent actually. His name was Mike Fairbanks. And he, uh, he was an Ojibwe man, but he was also the BIA superintendent. And he says, God damn it, I could hear him cussing out there. He says, you release all those guys immediately. He says, you cut, you, you put them in jail for cutting down a cottonwood tree? That's what they pray with, for God's sakes. And they had to come in and they, they, they released all of us. But those are, those are, stories like that are 10,000. So, from the boarding school days where over 100,000 children were taken away from their parents during the 40s and 50s and 10s and 20s and it was, it was, it's been horrible. It's hard to be Indian. I was thinking too about the illegal sterilization they did of all those native women during the, what was it, in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's documentations of thousands of them that were, that went into the hospital for um, something minor and came out of there sterilized without their consent or knowledge. So it, they've, done a, they've done a job on us and I think that um, a lot of it started with putting our, um, putting the babies in, in boarding schools and make it, it, making it um, unlawful to even fight them. I mean, the parents could get arrested if they didn't allow their children to go to these boarding schools when the when these officials came to pick them up. And you know, from what we're hearing of all the statistics, those kids that were putting board in boarding schools were um, sexually assaulted. You know, they were beaten. A lot of them died in there, and the parents never even knew that they died. You know, um, there were a lot of children that went home, and their parents found out their parents had passed away, and they were never notified. You know, it, it's just, if you go to some of the boarding schools that, that are still in existence, not as boarding schools, but still as a place to be, um, there's graveyards there, a lot of graveyards that hold our babies, that, mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're marked unknown. They have markers there that say unknown, and I'm saying, how can they say they're unknown when they took them out of our homes? They had a name. You know, they were, they were saying that they were going to take care of our babies, and now to put them, bury them and say they don't have a name? You know, it's just, it's just crazy, you know, what they've done to our people. And it should never have happened to anybody, but I know that that's where they started was with the children because they say that that's where they could break them was in the education system. Because if you get them at that age, then you're breaking the bond with the, with the parents. Um, you're breaking the bond with the culture. You know, these kids were coming home not knowing how to talk to their own families because they couldn't even speak the language anymore. You know, they were kept there, some of them, for years, you know. Oh, yeah. And then there was another place that, out here that they had that insane asylum, remember? They had an insane asylum out here where people, Indian people that resisted in any way were taken into this boarding, or into this insane asylum. And um, everybody that worked there said that they knew once these people went in those doors that they would never ever come out as free people. They would never come out. They were in there and that was, you know, end of their life. So. I want to say in 1977, after, after, after the incident out here, and uh, they, by the way, they racked up uh, all those nine, uh, all those indictments against us. Russell Means and I were facing 250 years in prison, plus a life sentence. And that we start, I started laughing about it, and Russ was chuckling, and the judge says, "What's so funny out there?" And I said, "Your Honor, the absurdity of all these charges." You know, nobody's going to do 250 years in prison and plus a life sentence. I said, that's what we're laughing about. He said, well, that's not my problem. That's your problem. So, but all the things like that, it was just, uh, in the, you know, the, the, but I want to say that uh, a lot of people have followed the, the, the struggles of Native people. In 1977, there were there were 11 pieces of legislation that would have totally crippled everything there was to be about Indian, cripple our to to destroy our, our identity, destroy who we were, destroy the names of Ojibwe, Chippewa, Lakota, and 
and we, we called for the longest walk, a walk across America. And that happened in 1978. And I never knew how many people would be affected by that walk. I never knew how many people would come out and support us. But I feel a sense of pride when, when, I, when Muhammad Ali asked us to come to his camp in Pennsylvania and as a champion of the world. And he says, come on, he says, I, I will help you. And there was, there was a singer named Tony Bennett said, what do you want us to do, Dennis? And, you know, there was, there was white people like Max Gale and, um, and, and there was uh, Stevie Wonder, um, Chris. Chris Christopherson, uh, and then Santana joined the, joined the line of people that, that wanted to help, and they did help. And the Eagles and a lot of people came, and even the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They, they, their, they, their brand of singing was wild, and and they attracted a lot of people. So there are some good people in this country. You know that I want to say that it is the policies of the government that that I will fight against. For their, those policies are very harsh and evil. But I, I remember seeing on television here when, when, when this wounded knee was taking place and they were shooting at us on that evening in March and they said and the winner is Marlon Brando and Brando wasn't there to go up and accept it. Like, there was this Indian girl, Sashin Littlefeather, who walked up there and said that Marlon Brando declines to accept because of the of the terrible treatment that Native people are getting. He says, and most, more particular, uh, the ones that wounded me at this very hour. And oh man, all the guys out there, the young warriors went running outside and they were shooting up in the air. And that, that's what I meant, that there was, it gave, there was pride. Pride was, a, was, was, was floating amongst us. It was drifting amongst us. It was, we were bathing in pride. We were showering with pride. And we will continue to do that. And I feel good. Um, at this moment, I feel good. I, I feel, I do pray. I do pray for the ones that we've lost. Many women and children we've lost along the way. And I will, I will pray for the Maoris.